Hi, I'm Michelle Somberfield, and my soul was Marilyn Monroe's during its last past life. <laughs> well, I just thought I would just talk tonight. Um, I was thinking a lot about different things, and one of the things I thought about was that I saw on a site where someone was calling me interested in fluff and interested in fame and basically trying to say that all I'm interested in is the glamour side of Marilyn. Which is actually kind of funny because I really don't talk about the glamorous side of Marilyn's life in my book. This is my book. It's called Marilyn, Not Just Another Girl, The Myth About Sleeping in the Nude. Anyway, um, I started thinking about my favorite movie. <laughs> it's Valley of the Dolls. Well, I like the sound of music too, but as far as drama goes, I like Valley of the Dolls, which was written by Jacqueline Suzanne, and it was made into a movie in 1967. It starred Patty Duke, Barbara Parkins, Sharon Tate, Susan Hayward, and a bunch of other talented people. But the ending scene in this movie, <laughs> I've seen people poke fun of it in a way, but I think it's kind of interesting. It seems like this movie is so dramatic, and then it ends kind of anticlimactic. However, the end of the movie has a lot of meaning. It ends with the main character, Anne Wells, who's played by beautiful Barbara Parkins, and she walks outside on a very sunny, crisp, very snowy winter afternoon or evening. I'm not sure which it is, but it's still light out. I guess that would make it afternoon because it would be dark, right? Um, but anyway, she walks outside and she basically is telling her boyfriend, forget it. You know... I'm not going to put up with your stuff anymore. I want more out of a relationship. You're not giving me what I need, and I'm not going to settle. Because she's matured. She's gone through pill addiction. She's lost a friend who committed suicide when she was ill. She saw another friend climb up the ladder of success and then plummet to the depths of despair, and she has managed to pull herself together, and she's going to exit a relationship that just isn't good for her, and hasn't been real ideal for a while, but you know, when you're young, you fall in love, or in lust, and it, it's easy to get sidetracked, and kind of put more emphasis on what other people want from you, and what other people need, than on what you need for yourself. So why am I wearing this coat? Well, <laughs> first of all, I have a very stuffed closet, um, lots of winter coats. We don't even wear some of them. And I've got my fake furs in this little tiny closet. I haven't worn them for years, um, but I, I found this one and I have this other one that's pretty much the same color. I think this one came from a Goodwill in Pennsylvania. And I can't remember where I got this. I think my nanny, that's what I call my grandmother, who I was very close to. Um, I think my nanny gave me this fake fur and a light-colored fake fur that I have. But anyway, in the closing scene of Valley of the Dolls, the main character is walking out into the sunny, snowy weather in a coat that pretty much looks like this. It's, it's dark fur. Mine's fake, but she's just walking down this like little road that's in the middle of the woods, and she's in New England, and Dionne Warwick sings the theme to Valley of the Dolls, and it's just so... <sighs> and then I feel sad because it's the end of the movie, and I want more of the movie, because it's the groovy 1967 style, and I love that. But anyway, I just thought I would put on this coat. I also want to talk about, you know, depth. You know, reincarnation is about the soul, 
And I know there's some people who have kind of alluded to the idea that pretty much straight across the board, you're always supposed to come back looking like what your soul generally looks like. Whatever a soul looks like. I mean, it's energy, right? But anyway, you're supposed to come back very similar time after time after time. What I want to say is one never knows what's really inside of a human being. You know, you know people by their actions, you know people by their appearances, but you don't truly know what's going on inside of them. And that made me think about these two coats. There's a reason I wore this one instead of this one. Let me show you. This one has a very nice lining. <laughs> this one, oh my gosh, this was so bad. The lining kept ripping. I kept sewing it. It kept ripping. Finally, I just took the scissors and cut the lining out. So inside, it pretty much looks like a mess. I mean, it's bad. Look at this. It's bad. <laughs> I mean, I could still wear it. It would still keep me warm, but you know, it's kind of like Hollywood magic, really. It's kind of like, oh, here's this glamorous fur. And then you look inside and you find out, oh my God, it's just, just a movie prop. You know, it, it's, it's not real. <laughs> but anyway, um, I was talking about Valley of the Dolls, which is a favorite movie of mine, along with The Sound of Music. And um, I assume most people out there know that dolls are... I, I don't know if I can, they're pills, you know, that, that's the term that's used for pills that the starlets take. And I, I want to say that during this lifetime, I've really never had a, a great desire to take drugs. I've certainly taken, you know, like over-the-counter medication if I really, really was hurting, like if my back was really bad, I might take a pill or two, um, over-the-counter stuff. And I'm not against people taking medicine if the doctor prescribes it to them and they really need it. I don't want anyone to think that. But I have to say that during this current lifetime, being sober is a pretty darn wonderful thing. That means not drinking too much. That means taking pills, but, you know, taking them when they're really necessary. Not to avoid things, not to just sleep my life away, not to be high, not to deal with pressures I don't want to deal with. You know, again, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with taking medication, and I know some people really, really need it and really benefit from it, but I'm just saying during this lifetime, you know, it, it has been important to me to go a different path than I went during Marilyn's life. And I think that the person that I was, my soul belonged to, during my last past life, Marilyn would be very proud to know that in the next lifetime that she did not need substances, that, that she did not need these things. Now, I'm not going to say I'm some perfect person. You know, I've gone through the phase where I've been a shopaholic. You know, I've gone through the phase where I've been a TV addict. You know, I've gone through the phase where whatever, you know, there's something that excites me and I get really obsessed with it for a certain period of time. That's the truth. Um, I know at one point I was so into mallard ducks that were landing in my yard, I'd put out more and more and more and more food until literally flocks of mallard ducks were coming into the neighborhood and eating in my yard. And the neighbors were pissed off because the ducks kind of crapped on things. <laughs> but so I'm not saying I'm some perfect person. I, I've certainly um, had my short-term addictions to, to different things that, you know, were thrilling to me. But I just want to say that during this current lifetime, I am more than happy to generally be very sober, very clear thinking, and to strive to be happy without, you know, outside things, you know, like... I think it's really important to 
not feel obligated to follow in the footsteps of any of the people I've been in, in the past. I think it's good to be able to pick and choose maybe the good qualities from various people I've been in the past, because I do remember 15 past lives at this point. Um, lives, did I say lives? Um, but, you know, Marilyn's is by no means my only past life that I remember. So I want to say that hopefully today I am a conglomeration of the most successful parts of my various past lives plus my own lifetime influence. Because I've got great parents, great sister, great friends, great boyfriend, great pets, a lot of wonderful people, my nanny, was a wonderful influence on my life, and I think it would be a real slap in the face to this lifetime, this new opportunity, if I felt that I needed to come back and be a carbon copy of who I was before, during my last past life, or any of my other previous lifetimes, because I am a different person now. So anyway, that's just what I wanted to say. I wanted to talk about one of my favorite movies and say that, you know, that's the beauty of reincarnation. It's a chance to forgive, to forgive others, to forgive yourself. I'm working on the forgiving others part because clearly I'm hung up on the fact that I was murdered during my last past life. But I think that reincarnation affords a person new opportunities. And yeah, you know, I, I saw on another site where someone was kind of alluding to the fact that Marilyn should probably have carried over a lot of her past misery into her current lifetime. And I, I said in my last video, I just didn't think that sounded right. And I'm saying it again. It's good to be here. It's good to be... I don't know, growing, it's good to be sober this lifetime around.